Hi everyone, welcome to another YFE Chat Live. This is episode 118 and it's all about cupcakes with Lori Schneider of the Cupcake Bar. I'm so excited to talk to her because it's a twist on a, a concept a lot of us are familiar with, especially in the Seattle area. I feel like we have a number of cupcake eateries, but she's done something really exciting with it. So stay tuned for the next 30 minutes. Use the hashtag YFE Chat and of course check in in the chat on YFELive.com. so much for joining us. I'm your host, Jennifer Dono. You can tweet me using the hashtag YFE chat through the entire 30 minutes. I am using tag board like I was using last week, so I'm going to try and feature as many of your tweets and Instagrams and Facebooks and Google Pluses as possible. The cool thing about tag board is it goes across social media and it pulls it into one central location. It's a it's a startup that's out of the Seattle area, so I'm super excited to support them. Um, this is episode, like I said, 118, and our featured guest tonight is Lori from the Cupcake Bar. She's out of Austin. And like I said in the intro, I've been looking up all sorts of fun stuff with her uh, today. And I know that she has a wealth of information. She's been doing this for, um, I don't know if she'd still be considered a startup. She's been doing it that long. Uh, but again, she's a female out of the Austin area. It'll be fun to talk to her. So it's episode 118. It's brought to you by MailChimp. MailChimp is the best way to send uh, emails to design, send, and share email newsletters. You can get started today for free at MailChimp.com. They're a fantastic sponsor of YFP Chat Live, and I'm so, so incredibly grateful for their support. Hopefully, you guys will all check them out. Again, it's free if you go to MailChimp.com. Sign up for our mailing list at yfe.me forward slash mail it. It's the best way to stay in touch with everything young female entrepreneurs. I'm really excited about tonight's show because, again, I'm going to not only am I featuring Lori of the Cupcake Bar, but uh, we're also featuring a few other young female entrepreneurs. And uh, for everyone that's watching live, I'm going to have to dub this in later, um, the overviews of some of the people that I'm featuring because I cannot get my Trello to open. Love Trello, but I'm not. I'm having issues with everything tonight. So the first one is Renata Emerson. She's of Immersion Events. It's a Seattle-based event planning company that helps organizations engage their audiences through memorable events. I wanted to feature Renata because she's a fantastic participant at YFE Chat. Um, she's also out of the Seattle area, which I'm out of as well. And then she's again in the events industry, which is something we're going to be talking about tonight with Lori. It's, you can find out more about her at em immersionevents.com. Um, and then Shannon Duffy, she's in New Jersey. It's a New Jersey-based company called The Botanical Box. And I've actually had the pleasure of talking to Shannon over the phone about her business and how she got started. And she has a fantastic story. Um, she Just a little bit about her. She's a rustic, wild floral design company. She travels all over the tri-state area for weddings and specializes in DIY brides. In addition to fresh flowers, she also has an Etsy shop that sells dried and preserved bouquets for the eco-friendly bride. And that was one of the things that I was really interested in speaking to her about was that idea that she was taking a service-based business and turning it into something that she could productize. I don't know if that's the right word, but I'm going to go ahead and say that that's the right word. <laughs> and then the third person I wanted to feature is Karen Linder, just because this is totally different. She owns, and I, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, Tethon 3D, Tethon3D.com with the number three. Tethon 3D provides innovative, cer innovative ceramic 3D products and services for rapid prototyping, historic design reproduction, and fine art and more. And it's 3D printing. So cool to, to find out about a female entrepreneur in that uh, space. So I'll have to talk to Karen more hopefully in the future. So let's go ahead and talk to our guests or find out a little bit more about our featured guest tonight, which again is Lori of the Cupcake Bar. She is the founder there. Just a tiny bit about her before we bring her on. She goes by the Chief Cupcake Officer as her title. She brings delighted grins to faces of all ages, uh, and she loves her work uh, because of the ultimate creative. It's a ultimate, ultimately a creative outlet. So, Lori, tell us a little bit more about the Cupcake Bar. And by the way, thank you so much for joining us. I should thank you before I do anything else. Oh, thank you for having me. I really appreciate you guys. Um, 
calling us. <laughs> so Lori, tell us the Cupcake Bar. I found you through Crave, which is a an organization for female entrepreneurs that again is out of the Seattle area. And uh, so Lori, I've just been attracted to for the last like six months. I think I've been following you. I think I asked you six months ago or so. <laughs> can you please be on YFE Chat Live? Or I, I guess I asked you when South by Southwest was happening. And so you guys yes. are crazy busy. So tell yes. us more about what it is that you do. Awesome. So yeah, thanks again for having us. Um, we are a cupcake catering company, but we all, we offer a really different and unique um, aspect to cupcakes. Um, we are event-based and we come out to parties and events and we set up an interactive cupcake bar at the event. And then at the event, guests get to customize their own cupcake. So they choose their cake, their filling, their icing, and their topping. And then our cupcake bartenders assemble it for the guest. So it provides an interactive dessert um, on a classic favorite, the cupcake. Everybody loves cupcakes. And um, just gives it something fun and unique. And we've got some really fun and different toppings and setups to really um, just make everything different and, and to make it customized for that specific event. So Lori, with that, I mean, was it the cupcakes first for you or was it the the events that you were initially drawn to? Um, it was food. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually had a catering company first and um, was doing that and it, it was kind of a spinoff from my catering company. So, um, and with catering, it's obviously events. So it's really kind of, a, a, it's really kind of both. It's the cupcakes because I love cupcakes. And then it's also um, the events because I, my heart's really in events and I really enjoy doing events. And the catering company, how long ago was that that you started the catering? Oh, goodness. Um, I, I guess we started that in 2005. And you said we, yeah. were you with partners at that time? I was. It was actually um, a girlfriend of mine from culinary school, and I um, had this brilliant idea to start a catering company, and um, and it actually went really well, but she ended up moving to Disney. Uh, she d did her intern in Disney and actually still works there. We still keep in touch. Um, so she moved on, and when she moved on, I just kind of assumed the or continued running the business and ran it for a good, I guess, I don't know, um, five years or so, six years, um, until we actually did a cupcake bar. And that was actually a part of one of our events. And because of that, I did the spinoff of just having the business of the cupcake bar, um, just because so of the sex. Oh, go ahead. Then, I mean, that's really interesting that you went from that and you kind of, um, I guess if you were in a tech startup, it would you you would have pivoted the the business concept. So, uh, how did you go from the idea of the cupcake bar? So you're catering and you're doing all sorts yeah. of things to a, a much wider audience, a much bigger, I'm assuming, uh, array of services. And then you narrow down the niche into this is the type of event that I want to do, and this is the type of service I want to provide. How did you go from idea into actually implementing that? Well, um, I had the experience of, of launching a cup, uh, catering company. So that, this in and of itself is really just, it's a catering company, but just based off cupcakes. So I had that experience of already launching that type of company. Um, so that was really, really helpful. Um, but as far as like deciding who to market to, how to market, who my clients were going to be, any of that was really, it was completely different than catering because with catering, I had a really solid base. Um, of clients already um, moving into this it's very different and it's very event specific and we're not really you know we have to be very careful about you know how we market because I can put an ad in a magazine and someone thinks we, we're just a storefront so I had a really hard time like learning how to market and how to get our get the point across about what we do and how it's different and why you need us for your event so well, and I think it's such a cool idea, especially when you look at some of the corporate events that you've done. It's, mm -hmm. it's funny because I came from the web hosting industry. We owned a business in web hosting, and we would go to these events, and those guys had millions of dollars coming in, and they created events. I think one of the conferences we went to was a million-dollar conference that they put on, and they did all sorts of cute little uh, themes where I really remembered the event and the sponsors because of that. They incorporated, I think one of it was like a vodka event, and so anyway, I think it's a really cool idea. It's a cool twist. And just to clarify, then, you don't have a retail space. You don't have somewhere where someone could just go in. It, it just focuses solely on catering then. Exactly. Yeah, we, we like to specialize in events just because 
A, it's really my passion and I really love it. And so um, having a storefront is a whole different business. Um, my background is in restaurants and I've done a lot of like store openings for restaurants. And so I know it's just a whole other business and I maybe at some point we'll get there, but I just really love events. So I really try to just focus on that. To get started too, was there, was it pretty capital intensive? Did you have to, I mean, did you finance everything yourself? Yeah, I actually, um, when I was doing my catering, I had, was saving my money um, because I was working full time and then I was catering on the weekends for a very long time. And so as I was catering on the weekends, I really at that point wasn't paying myself. I was just kind of stashing everything um, just because I knew like, you know, I still had a steady income coming in until I quit working full time, which was so scary. I wanted just to be, I was just sick to my stomach when I quit because I was so scared. But um But then I was able just to kind of continue just to save a little bit. So I had some um, money set aside, thankfully, and was able to use that to do, to get started, get started up and ready to go. Do you mind if I ask what kind of like the range of how much it costs to start something like this? Um, (laughs) Um, well, I would say, um, a probably realistic range is about maybe 25,000 is what, So it's not terrible um, at all, but, you know, when you start looking at all of your equipment and and, um, paying people and marketing, I mean, marketing we spent a lot and we spent a lot of time and money getting out into the public eye and just doing the cupcake bar wherever we could so people could see us and understand the concept because I can tell you about it and it's a lot of fun just to tell you about it, but when you experience it, it's way more fun and people really get it at that point, so... So you started with a full staff then. You didn't just say, I'm going to go ahead and put this up by myself. I, you really wanted to make sure that you had people to man the events. Um, yes. Yes, I did have um, people to man the events. And actually, they were people who were already working with me from my catering company. So I already knew them. They already kind of knew how I worked and, and how we did events. And to be honest, when we started, we didn't have a ton of business. So um, we launched in, um, or we did our first Cupcake Barn in, in 2007. We launched in 2008, um, did the big launch in 08, and um, the economy dropped in 08. So my big dreams and hopes of doing a ton of corporate, which I was doing with catering, basically like just all went away because there was, they weren't spending and they were laying off and we're an extra, um, we're a luxury item, so to speak. So, um, I really had to change course. Well, really it's interesting too, the idea of going from catering and you're doing these corporate events and now you're doing this cupcake fluffy and you do a lot of wedding imagery and like mm-hmm. a birthday cake type or birthday type stuff on your yeah. website. So as far as the staff goes and like telling people things, you know, if you're at a networking event and, and introducing yourself or if you're mm-hmm. even talking to a friend about it, what was the transition like from saying I own this catering company to I own the cupcake bar.com? Did you still run the catering company? company when you were getting this off the ground how did that was did you just cut all ties and tra- and and move into this new area mm-hmm. so it's a very interesting story actually um i was running the catering company and i was actually and i'm involved in this company too but i was actually really involved with it because i created all the menus and everything that we did for um catering my husband actually got a transfer from uh, to go live in copenhagen for a year and a half Um, that transfer occurred, um, I guess we moved over there in mid 2008. So I launched, had my huge launch party and got everything going in April of 08, um, moved to Copenhagen and (laughs) June, July of 08. Um, when I moved, obviously the catering, um, had to stop because I, there's just no way I could do that. But with a cupcake company, um, I knew going into it that there was a chance that I could move. Um, Their company had an acquisition, and so acquisitions with larger companies sometimes, most of the time, actually don't even happen because there's so many things that have to go right. Um, So I kind of was just like, oh, yeah, it'll happen, or it won't, or whatever, and um, kind of blew it off until it happened. (laughs) And... um, but, but I kind of, in the back of my mind, was planning, okay, I had someone here who could um, run it and manage it for us and um, make sure everything was, was going well. So I actually set it up so that I could leave and manage it from Copenhagen. And with Skype and everything, it just really made it so much easier. And I did several interviews over Skype um, 
a lot of times people never even knew that I was living over there. Um, I didn't <laughs> publicize it on, you know, on our website or anything like that. Um, but I was still very active in the business and, and very um, hands-on. Um, I was back here for the holidays so we could make sure we we're running our holiday parties. So with that transition, it made it very easy to um, kind of stop doing catering um, and just focus solely on that. So it, it was, a, it was actually a relatively easy transition. Um, and then once we moved back, we were there for about a year and a half. Um, the cupcake bar was busy enough to where I could just really focus on that. And, um, again, it was so fun and just, um, it's, it's just a lot of fun. So, um, and then everybody's always happy because it's cupcakes. So, well, I think that's what drew me to your website was something, and I read an article about this, the idea of that candy is is nostalgic. It brings you back mm-hmm. to childhood. It's just a happy type of experience. And so, yeah, when I looked at your website, I saw candy and candied apples, and I was just like, okay, mm-hmm. so I need to talk to her. <laughs> <Because that looks laughs> like fun. We're um, very into nostalgia, or at least I am, I should say. Yeah. So there's a few people on the chat that are talking about the marketing, and we're going to get to that in just a second. But I do think it's funny that you brought up that you weren't even living in the place of where you were doing business. And yeah. I, I listened to a podcast where you're talking about that. And uh, what makes me laugh is that we've had a few different entrepreneurs on here where they say, oh, I was just waiting to the, the perfect moment. And then when they actually started their business was probably the least perfect of moments that they could have chosen. <laughs> So for you, the economy was crashing and and yes. you weren't even living in the country yet. You still started yeah. the business and you're still ava- I mean, you're still around. How many years later? Six years later? Um, it'll be seven in December. Congratulations. Thank first you. of all, that's huge. So going into the marketing of this. So you started the cupcake, um, the cupcake bar. Now, you'd already been catering. So did you go back to your Rolodex and say, hey, guys, this is what we're starting? How did you get that first gig as the cupcake bar? Right. So yeah, I, my, my, my plan initially was to utilize the contacts I already had from catering. Um, again, most of my clients were corporate, uh, type clients or in-home clients, meaning, um, smaller parties, like more like private shopping type parties or, um, not a lot of weddings, uh, just because I just tended to do a lot of corporate. Um, so I, yeah, my plan was like, okay, I'm going to tap into them. It's going to be great. And, um, you know, we had our launch party in 08 and then I'm thinking the next day the phone's ringing off the hook and it's crickets. And, um, it was really hard. It was really hard getting started and, um, not getting down on myself because, you know, the the phone's not ringing. And I was thinking, you know, with, with catering, like we were always just so busy. And then here it's like, you know, nothing, not nothing, but you know, just so much slower. So, um, for me just really, you know, kind of powering through that and figuring that part out was just um, really kind of a struggle when I first started and um, realizing that my corporate clients that I had were not, you know, no one was spending money. And so that all just kind of went away and I had to really figure out what I was going to do and how I was going to change my marketing plan. So you were just persistent calm, cool, yeah. and collected. If I were you, I probably would be crying and opening up the wine and everything. Uh, as- <laughs> probably that I wasn't here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. So, I mean, now you opened up and you're, how did you get that first client then? What, how did that happen? I mean, if you're not going with the corporate route, how did you break into the wedding market then? Well, that, that's exactly it. Um, I, when we started, um, and you know, I have to say like my team that I've had is, just been phenomenal. I mean, I couldn't do any of it without them. And even to this day, our team is fantastic. So they're really the ones that, especially when I was gone, that was able to really continue to make this grow and, um, and move forward. Um, so just have to say that. But, (laughs) um, but, oh no, I forgot the question. (laughs) How did you get into the wedding industry? How did you get that first client there? So yeah. So when corporate, I'm sorry. Um, when corporate, (laughs) When I realized that corporate was not going to be where I was going to really be able to focus uh, my marketing efforts, um, I thought, well, 
people are still going to get married, right? And even though the economy is bad, they're still going to get married. So I thought, well, I'm just going to change my marketing focus. Instead of going corporate, I'm going to hit weddings and really try to really focus on weddings. And at that point, I catered a couple of weddings. So I knew I knew the idea of the wedding and I knew kind of the flow and all of that. And I knew events, you know, just again, corporate events are very different than weddings. Um, so for me, it was also a learning process to really focus on weddings and how to break into that industry because, um, it takes a long time, uh, to do that. And, uh, so for me, it was just learning that learning the weddings as well as the industry and what is the best way to market and how do I, how do I start marketing and how do I find my brides? So that was a big, um, hump for me to just kind of get over. Well, I think it's funny, too, because you think of this as being a very unique type of a a service, and there's probably not that many competitors out there that offer the same thing you offer to the brides, whereas other, maybe an event um, planner or someone that just creates cakes probably are up against a lot of other people like that. But at the same time, if someone is buying a cake, then they might not be buying cupcakes. So you still have a number of competitors. And in that sense, so if you're going to break into the wedding industry and you're learning how to do this, did you invest? money in advertising were you up on the knot I mean where where was the best when you were just getting started where was the best place to put uh, your your money as far as that goes or your, not even yeah. your money your time or were you giving away free products I mean what, what did that look like yeah I gave away a lot of free products I still do um, but for me um, I think doing the the wedding shows um, and not the for me personally, not the big ones and nothing against those big wedding shows. Um, we just, when we set up, we, we have so much dialogue with our clients because they have so many questions because a lot of times maybe they haven't seen the setup before. So there's a lot of questions and a lot of back and forth. So for us, the smaller wedding shows tend to work really well, the very personal wedding shows. I did initially advertise with a knot when I first started and it didn't work for me at all. Um, I just wasn't pulling any brides off of it. And I think really... In hindsight, I think a lot of it was because I was still so new. Um, And I know, like, it's scary. You don't want to maybe pick someone who is going to do your cupcakes a year from now if you don't know if they're going to even be around. Um, So, you know, I I totally get all of that. Um, So I think for me, starting out, the best thing that I learned was just getting the product into people's mouth and having them experience the cupcake bar. Because once they experienced it, they loved it, and they got it. So that that was really starting out what we did as far as marketing goes. Well, it's funny because I hear a lot of mixed messages about whether or not the knot and wedding wire and all of those sites are mm-hmm. effective. And it is. It's really expensive. And mm-hmm. I did, when I was looking up researching you, it was a lot of um, reviews. Mm-hmm. So from past clients. So let's say an event planner is just getting started and they start doing a couple weddings for free. Mm-hmm. What do you do to make sure that people leave those good reviews if they had an awesome experience or maybe they tried you out at a wedding conference? How do you make sure that they get on the site to review you and what site do you choose to have them review you on? Yeah, that is a that's a really tough one. So yeah, so now I am very active on the knot in Wedding Wire. Um I've been around a little bit longer. We've, you know, we have some reviews on there, which is great. Um so between where I guess the place where the most reviews for us happen are going to be the not wedding wire and then Yelp for like our, um, you know, for some weddings and then also for our generic client, like a corporate client or whatnot, and I, not generic, but you know, like a, not a wedding client, um, <laughs> so, uh, uh, make sure I'm clear about that. But, um, yeah, I, it's really hard because those for a small business like me, those reviews are golden and, um, they mean so much to us because I know myself personally, I re- I look at reviews for everything all the time, whether it be Yelp or, or wedding wire or whatever it is. Um, I'm constantly looking at, at reviews because it tells so much. Of course I take everything with a grain of salt because it's real easy to post anything up on the internet. But, um, but I do look at those. And so, um, you know, if, if, if it makes sense that, you know, in the bride and groom ask or our corporate clients ask, I definitely say, oh yes, you know, here's where we are. So please, you know, feel free to leave us a review. I haven't been as good about sending them the links, which I really should be better about that. Um, because again, they're that it's golden. It's just kind of awkward because I don't want to be like, here, review me. Cause you know, <laughs> you know it's, I want it to be almost organic for them to do it. And so they should just um, want to go up there and review you. Take the time and pull up Yelp. I know. And it's hard because I know like I personally want to review people when they do a great job and I get busy, you know, in life and all of that too. But I know it and I just know how important it is. So 
I'm going to be better about it too. <laughs> I think as entrepreneurs too, uh, part of our daily action calendar was is to go and review people. Um, if you have an app you like, take a second to review it. I think it's good. You're sending out good vibes to the universe saying, yeah. other people, if you like me, say, say good things about me. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, Lori, what about social media? So like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I mean, I see on your website down here that you're on all of them. Yes. Um, but where do you, where do you, and actually you guys, now that I'm looking at it, there's a little Yelp guy too. Uh, yes. so, uh, where do you focus your energy on? What's brought the most return for you? You know, even if you guys aren't in the wedding industry for people that are watching, if you are in a service profession, um, I think this is, this is valuable. So where, where's the best place to, to put your time in dollars? Um, that's, you know, I, do you before, even focus on social media? Cause I've had oh I talked gosh, to a yeah. few people that are just like, we don't do it yet. We do ton of social media. It is really important for us. And we are very active, um, on Twitter and Facebook and, and Instagram, all of that. Um, and I do, I'm very careful about what I post on what, and I try to follow the rules and I try to learn about it because in essence, um, it is your time. However, it's free advertising for the most part. Um, where I did put um, money into was Facebook and just, um, you know, building our, um, audience on that a little bit. Um, I haven't invested anything in Twitter or Instagram other than my time and being active. And really that's what you need is you just need to be active on it and organically you'll build your, your audience for those things and, and interacting with your guests and, um, or your, your followers. Um, I can tell you something really cool is, um, I've had some really cool experiences from Twitter because Twitter for a lot of people, um, you know, especially like, um, celebrities and stuff, it, it is really them. And it's a really kind of interesting way to reach out. So South by Southwest, not last year, the year before, um, I happened to catch Perez Hilton. He was coming to South by, he comes every year to do a, uh, a show. And I was like, Hey, let me bring you cupcakes. I just happened to be on Twitter and just happened to see he was, you know, he's lost all this weight and he was craving sugar. And I was like, I can totally help you with that. Um, and so, yeah, he led us bring cupcakes to him and brought us up to the room and was just, you know, talking to us and just so nice. And so, um, it's really cool to see how that medium can really, and we've, I've had, I've tweeted with some like really cool people, Rachel Ray's magazine and, and whatnot. We've tweeted back and forth. And I think that that's really cool that you can actually reach some of these things that I never, you know, with Facebook, you can't really do. And, um, Instagram, you know, you can have the followers and whatnot, but the Twitter is really interesting because you can really reach people who maybe you were never able to reach, um, any other way, um, in a lot of cases. So that's cool. But I, I do like Facebook. Um, they are making a lot of changes and so I am having to learn about that. So I try to learn, um, what they're doing and how it's going to affect my business. Um, from my understanding, they are moving to, uh, less the a percentage, a very small percentage of your people are going to see what you're posting. So, uh, I hate that because we are very active on it, but, uh, we just, I just have to learn their new way and see if that's going to change, say, okay, instead of focusing on Facebook, I'm going to focus more, more on Instagram. So, um, well, but know, it's always it's changing. Funny. And so it's important to learn. Chelsea from horse feathers. I brought her up a couple times. She, you guys, if you're watching, you need to go check out her episode because Gary Vaynerchuk actually quoted uh, mm -hmm. Chelsea and said, you need to go look at horse feathers and how they use Facebook. And she said the same thing that you said, basically, yeah. you know, be authentic, be organic, uh, as far as how you grow people. And then and people will want to they'll seek you out on Facebook versus just yeah. waiting for it to show up on the news feed um, so one of the things that I like I get said uh, just a little bit ago I looked at your website and candy cupcakes makes me hungry there's a couple of people on chat earlier that were talking about green juicing and how oh. <laughs> this is probably not the best conversation they should be in right now um, <laughs> so how do you so these beautiful photos what I'm always wondering okay so I I appreciate beautiful aesthetics. I I wish that I was a better designer. I wish that I was a better photographer, but I'm not. And mm -hmm. I'm wondering, how do people like you create these beautiful websites and these amazing photos with food especially? How do you, as far as hiring a photographer, how do you do it? How do you make sure that it's staged? Does a photographer do that for you? How does this, how does this come to be? A lot, a lot, a lot of work. <laughs> okay, that makes me feel better. <laughs> the team. I mean, again, it goes back to the team. I obviously cannot do this on my own, but we just updated our website last year. Um, the 
it was the same group that did our website before, Pound Design and Branding. And they, um, I've been with them since they started and they've been with me since we've started. So it's kind of cool. We've both grown um, together, but they are absolutely amazing. So it was a lot of meetings about design and content and how we were going to, again, market and get what we do across so people understand how we're different um, from the beginning. And food is so important. And so to see the products and um, the biggest compliment is when someone says, oh my God, I left your website and I was starving for a cupcake. Mm -hmm. And that's what, that's what we want. Right. So, um, so worked with them and they really helped create um, the content for us. And then as far as photos go, being in the wedding industry, uh, we work with a lot of photographers and um, I actually had formed a relationship with one um, chick click and she's here local and she's done, uh, she did our, our caramel apple photos when we were just had done that and that went really well. So then she did another project for us. And so that went really well. So it made sense the aesthetic of her type of photography worked really well with what I wanted um, for our photo shoot. We also have had a designer um, create kind of the pennant banner that you see and the kind of look and feel. Um, she created all of that and she's squirrel and nut. She's awesome. So I worked with her and then I basically had to lay out like, okay, today we're doing the photo shoot and what shots do we need um, after meeting with the photographer and all of the different people and saying, okay, we need basically a shot list and here's all the stuff we need, all the colors. Um, we did it at a local venue here in Austin called the Allen house and they're fantastic. And I knew, you know, I'd worked there before, so I knew exactly like where we could go and the lighting and all of that. So just having been in the industry, I was able to kind of pull from what I already had, um, knew very, very well. And so that made it a lot easier, but I will say it was a lot of work and it, it totally has paid off. Um, just in that I'm so happy in the, the final, uh, website, it was exactly kind of what we had envisioned, but like I said, it was a lot of work. Um, so just, I, I think, uh, if you're going to do a website, just, um, find, think about what your final vision is going to be. And then you can take the steps and, and find the people that really are going to understand that vision, um, and help you, get to that point so well and there's a good question in the chat because i mean i feel like we all want that <laughs> and um i think you brought up a lot of good points about how to find the right person because sometimes we'll find the easy person that you know maybe we saw somebody that used them before and they don't yeah. necessarily match our aesthetic or our, our personal how we work with them but what about the cost so you found the perfect person for you and you put the work into it what kind of price range should someone expect to have that quality look um, it's not cheap. And, um, well, one of the things look cheap. Learns, it looks uh, one of the, thank you. Um, one of the things we learned or I learned or I've learned through business is, you know, um, you kind of get what you pay for. Um, so, and, and, yeah. <laughs> you know, I hate to say that, but in some cases, you know, if, if, the guys that I worked with for our, our website and design, they have so many years of experience and they charge for that. Um, did it hurt? Absolutely. But I had to budget for it and um, it was worth every penny. And I'll tell you one thing, they worked with me until it was absolutely perfect. I'm sure they were ready to kill me by the time our project was over, but they were so great. Oh, and the other person I had, I should point this out, is I had a, a copywriter and someone to help me. I am not a good writer and that was for website for me, that was the hardest thing. And um, just through talking um, with industry people and getting feedback and letting, kind of putting it out there, hey, I'm looking for someone who can help me with this. Um, I got an amazing referral for a gal here in Austin who um, basically we do a phone interview. I attempt to write something and she makes me sound really beautiful. And like, I know what I'm doing and I can write really well. And it's really not me at all. It's her making me sound great. So when I talk about there being a team, there is definitely a team. Um, my total website cost, including photography and design and all of that, probably, um, goodness, this is bad. I don't have a firm number. I could probably figure it out, but I would say probably in the range of about five to 6,000. Um, that was, was that's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, like I did, I did well, maybe, yeah. Yeah, I I, um, I did a lot of the work myself um, too. So, um, like, of course, I did all the design and layout, what I wanted, and all of that. So that really helps. Um, like, I didn't have a designer come in and like set everything up. I just had specific elements with. Um, so that if you can do that, that helps. Um, but yeah, by the time you add in all the 
extra cost. It does add up, but again, it was worth it. And well, um, so, Lori, let's talk about really fast because I have just mm-hmm. two more questions ish. Hopefully, um, the first one is since we're talking about copywriting, uh, when you're creating marketing and you're creating the the menus and how you work with people especially with food, what I'm interested in is with dietary restrictions. So many, and especially in Austin. Austin yeah. is kind of like the Seattle, Oregon type of vibe where people yes. have all sorts of diets. Some people love, love bacon and other people think it's the, you know, the devil. So yeah. how, do you, how do you plan for all that? How do you market to people with so many different, um, so many different diets? Yeah, so, um, we make it available, basically. Um, we have a lot, uh, probably our biggest like dietary restriction request is going to be gluten-free, and I'm sure that that's kind of all over the country right now. Um, and we can offer that for them. Um, we can offer a gluten-free cupcake, and um, you know, we just have minimums, and it, of course it costs a little bit more, but we can offer that for them. And the biggest thing is to make sure that they know is we're not a gluten-free bakery. Uh, we um, do our best to, you know, keep from cross contamination and all of that. But if they are like strong celiac, I just say it's not even like, I don't even want to sell it to them because I don't want them to get sick on, on me. Um, I love so that, that you know that my, <laughs> my mother, <laughs> who I've already talked about once on this uh, live webcast, she is gluten free. And mm-hmm. when we go to restaurants, it's amazing how many people still don't know what that means and how seriously they should be taking it. Yeah, it's. I mean, if if you're there's gluten sensitivities, and then there's gluten intolerances, and then there's celiac disease, and uh, <laughs> you're gonna laugh, but the reason I know is because I actually have a degree in nutrition, um, which is just Why highly. Why ar- laugh? That's awesome. <laughs> now I you do, do cupcakes. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's really funny, but but so I. The good thing on that is um, I have a degree in nutrition and in food science, so I know a lot about that sort of thing. Um, and, and nuts is another one. Um, if someone has a strong nut allergy, I just, I can't. I, we, again, we'll do our best to not cross contaminate, but I also know that if you have a nut allergy, there's, it could be very, very severe and, and cause death. So I just don't want any, I don't want that on my clock. So if that's the case, um, we have some other bakeries in town who are, and I'm more than happy to work with them and to pick up the product and take it to our event and keep everything separate and, and do all of that to accommodate our guests that have those sensitivities or intolerances. Um, but yeah, so we can do that for sure. We, um, we can do a vegan cupcake, um, and we can do a sugar-free for our diabetic clients. Um, we offer that as well. So we do try to work with the different, um, dietary restrictions, um, as they come up. We don't really market to that because, um, yeah, I didn't notice too much on your website and I was thinking, okay, well that's interesting, but I know it's available cause I heard it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't really market to it, but, but if a guest is interested, they, they always ask. So, um, yeah. That's an interesting point. So people will ask about it. <laughs> Absolutely. They have no problem asking, which is good. That's a great point of what you should put on your website. You don't have to put every single thing on there. Yeah. Make sure that it's just enough that people will take the next step to request exactly. the quote or contact you. So, Lori, I want to ask you. So, my last question. There's people on the chat that are saying, oh, my gosh, that's a lot of money when you mention the, the piece about the website and you saving money, that type of a thing. As a young female mm-hmm. entrepreneur, not many people have that opportunity to turn their, their life savings into a business. Mm-hmm. Um, they might be jumping from career to career. What if advice would you give to a young female entrepreneur who wants to, let's say she loves cupcakes or she loves planning weddings and she wants to get into into this business? Okay, let's do a twofold part to this question. So the first okay. question or the first thing I'd like to know is where would you say they should put their money if they have a limited amount of money to spend on the business? Where should that go to towards? And then the other part of the question is just what advice would you give them as far as how to get started um, and persevering through opening up the doors and not getting the first phone calls like you had? What advice would you mm-hmm. give to them? So um, where to put your money? Um, I believe it's the first question. Um, Looking back on it, one of the things I wish I had done was um, gotten out and networked a lot more than I did. I just didn't know what I didn't know kind of thing. Um, And especially in the wedding industry, it's so important because it's very relationship based. And and I totally get it. Like you don't want to refer someone if you don't know them and you don't know that they're going to be around or um, that they're going to 
listen and do quality work or whatnot. So what I wish I had done and spent my money and time on was doing more of the networking and getting to know not only the industry, but the people in it. So I had people that I could go to and talk to and ask questions to. Um, a lot of times you'll find that people, all you have to do is ask them a question and they are more than willing to open up and, and um, give you feedback and, and help you through any issue you're having, especially as a startup, because most of the time, especially in my industry, a lot of people own their own business and they've been there. So I've been so fortunate to have people who have shared their experiences with me when I've you know, come up, up against something and I just need a seasoned professional um, advice. And even to this day, I still have these people that I'll go to if you know something comes up. So I think net networking is really important in, in finding and getting to know people within your industry. A lot of times it doesn't cost a whole lot of money. Um, but it helps you to kind of start building those relationships. And that way, um, you know, I can tell you I'm in a group here in Austin and there's actually a really great chapter in Seattle and I'll be in Seattle for their conference in August. Um, so you have to tell me the cupcake places to go in Seattle, Yay. but, um, called ISIS, um, international special events society. And here in Austin, we have a really great chapter. Um, and I'm a pretty talkative person and I'm usually not shy, but I got really intimidated early on and just, didn't really get involved because I just, just was really intimidated. And what I wish I had done and what would have been so much more helpful was for me to have joined a lot earlier and to get involved and not just kind of go for it. Um, so, and again, that doesn't cost a whole lot of money. It does take time. Um, it does take follow, follow up. So if you meet somebody, you know, follow up with them. If it, if there's a good connection there or you're interested in what they're doing, take them to lunch and just kind of pick their brain and get to know them and how they got started. I know most people, again, are so open to talking to you. So networking would be a really, really good, um, inexpensive way to kind of get your foot in the door and, and understand who all is out there. Um, and the second question was a piece of advice. Yep. That, mm -hmm. A piece of advice. Um, I think one of the things, um, on some level when you're starting a business is ignor ignorance is bliss a little bit. I think looking back, if I had realized all the steps I had to take to get to where I am now, I would have been overwhelmed and I wouldn't have done it. So one of my biggest pieces of advice would be just take it step by step, day by day, and don't try and do it all in one weekend or one week, just, you know, a little bit at a time. And, um, it'll all kind of come together. Um, I know when I launched from, when we did our first cupcake bar in 07, and then we launched in 08, we launched in April of 08, that was four months. And it was just running, 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 running to get everything set up and ready to go. Because there was always the chance that I knew that I might be leaving. Um, and I wanted to be ready to go for April where we're, we're typically really busy here in Austin. Um, so take, you know, just take everything one step at a time and try not to get overwhelmed with everything. I know looking back on things, there were things that I missed completely. And, um, now of course we fixed that, but, um, again, it's just one, one day at a time, one thing at a time. And I still have to tell myself that because I keep a to-do list like this long of all the things we need to do. And it just never seems to go down. Um, so just one step at a time and, and you'll get there and, and find those key people in the industry and get to know them. And, um, it'll help you learn so much more about your industry and getting involved. Lori, it's so funny that you picked those two items to talk about because I feel <laughs> like each week we have a very similar message where people from all sorts of different industries that we feature say something very similar. They say, get out there and talk to people. We even featured a cloth diaper that talked to a direct competitor who opened up their doors and said, this is exactly how you start this business. Absolutely. Uh, and then also about the idea that you don't need to know everything and that might actually be the best thing for you. Absolutely. I swear, everyone says that. So thank you so much for affirming that. I think it's such a powerful message to hear each and every week, especially as a young female entrepreneur, just get started. And obviously in your, whatever you've been doing has been the right thing because uh, your website's beautiful. There's so many positive reviews out there about you and you're also winning awards too. What was the award that you won recently? Uh, we won um, Best Dessert at the ISIS Gala lot, two weeks ago, I believe. And um, it's a huge honor because um, it's voted on by your peers. And, um, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's very humbling and it's awesome. And, um, I'm very proud of that. Um, so yes, yes, we've, um, yes. 
Well, Lori, it's awesome. <laughs> you know, congratulations on everything. And thank, thank you, you so much for joining us tonight thank and being so patient me. with everything and really taking the time to answer so many amazing uh, questions that people had in the chat. So, Lori, thank you again. Thank you. All right, everyone. So you've just been watching Lori of the Cupcake Bar. And so, so grateful, like I said, to have her on tonight. Uh, she answered, I love guests like this that will just say, this is how you do it. Because when I approach people to be a guest on the show, I'm always a little nervous about promotional versus mentoring people. I, of course, want to make sure that the business gets out there. But at the same time, I want to make sure that people that are listening get the advice to start a company, whether it's a similar one or something in a totally different, different industry. And wasn't Lori awesome? at really giving us some very actionable advice. Uh, so again, you've been watching YFE Chat Live, the live show that happens every Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern here on YFELive.com. I've been your host, Jennifer Dono. Hopefully we'll see you back here next Thursday. I found our guest, and uh, she's featured an entrepreneur. She uh, created a shirt that initially was supposed to be part of a crowdfunding campaign that caught on and created a whole movement. Um, Tara, Tara, Tyra Banks was wearing her shirt. It's I'm an Entrepreneur Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to be our guest next Thursday. I'm really excited to talk to her. So hopefully we'll see you back here next Thursday. Same time, same place. Subscribe to us on YouTube and join our mailing list at yv.me forward slash mail it. Thanks everyone and have a fantastic week.